with my good friend and colleague, Paul Kirschbaum. I'm Leslie Wooten. It's 1033. Let's get into it. Today's topic, training. And so this is training. It's part two of a series on hiring talent. We already went through recruiting. Hopefully you watched that, got some laughs out of it, maybe even uh, stunned with some of our responses, um, and grabbed some tips on how to recruit. And this is the part where, okay, you've brought them in the door. We're going to talk about training and what to do with them. And then the next part of this uh, hiring talent series, we're going to get into retaining, keeping them on board, and inspiring, motivating your team. So this is training. So yes or no, Paul, people just know what they're supposed to do. Yeah, no. <laughs> I include myself in that. <laughs> no, they don't just know. They don't just, I mean, it's so easy. Why don't they just come in and do it? Oh, here's a savant. Well, you still had some training. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How easy is it as a, as a professional um, to lose sight of the basics, to, to just take for granted the simpler parts of your job? I think it's like human, human nature. I mean, yeah. we, we, we do stuff so many times that somebody's doing it for the first time, they have no clue. But we've done it so many times, it's, it's second nature to us. It's muscle memory. Um, so sometimes you just forget how hard it was. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. I just had my second kid. I forgot how hard it was. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> no, no, I did. <laughs> I forgot that I had the baby amnesia. I thought they were. Just, I, I just don't remember all. Maybe it's because I'm older, but I don't remember it being uh, this difficult. That's funny. So you had to get retrained on how to be a dad. I did. Like I haven't changed yeah. a diaper in four years. You know, or no, a couple uh, years. Uh, four years. But a funny. couple of years. Like I haven't done that in a while, and you just you forget. That's funny. So that you didn't you didn't get training in the hospital on the way home, like you didn't they, have they did they didn't do training. No, because they'll give you a <laughs> what's that commercial, the Will Smith commercial? They give you a thousand page book on your TV, but they're just like, oh, here's a baby. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Have fun with that. Yeah. Uh, so people don't know what to do, even if they're going to figure it out. And and here's something that I I talk a lot about in the classrooms that I teach and and talking to business professionals that. I love the Montessori schools, love it. Love the idea of children exploring and deciding what they wanna learn day to day. They've got a science center over here. They got a math center over here. History we teach over here. Hey kids, what do you want to learn today? That sounds fun. That sounds like a way to get kids involved with learning. We're talking about business. We're talking about the bottom line profit centers we're talking about managing and operating in the hospitality industry i don't have time for you to figure out your job i know for a fact some people are smart enough to figure it out i'm i'm not going to wait and hope and allow you to make mistakes along the way i'm going to make sure no matter how much you tell me you know how to do it i'm going to make sure you do it right and you do it the way that i expect you to do it Fair? Very fair. Yep. Um, so the, the basics. Uh, the basics for me, you, you brought up. Uh, so we both got two kids. And I, I, don't, I don't remember the, oh, I forgot how to do this part. That's funny. Um, <laughs> my, my head was still in the industry. And I was thinking about carrying a tray. Anytime I've picked up a tray in my later career where I'm not waiting tables, I'm not bartending, I'm, I'm in the, the leadership role, Anytime I pick up a tray, it's second nature to me. And I've gotten to the point where I don't know how somebody can't carry it. Like I put, I pick up a tray, I can put wine glasses, champagne flutes, I can put plates over the side, and I just know how to maneuver to get to it. And it's, it's second nature. And I forget about the part where you have to train new people how to carry a tray and how hard it is. Because if you bring somebody into this industry and you're like, oh, just grab that tray of food and take it to the table. Oh. It's fun. <laughs> that's, that's it's fun. That's my favorite. So it's like, go get me a bucket of hot steam. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's a squeegee sharpener, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, and you it's, don't know who trained them. If they, even if they weren't, yeah. if they say they're coming from the industry, you don't know who trained them. Mm -hmm. It's up an hour away. You've got to learn the basics. You've, you've absolutely got to learn the basics. And uh, on, the, on the idea of tray service, if I'm in casual dining, if I'm in fast-paced dining, I can grab a tray, I can grab a big tray, and I can honestly serve off of it professionally, politely, and getting around people quickly and, uh, and efficiently. 
but I've worked in places where a tray stand was absolutely required just for the presentation of everything. And I've absolutely seen servers who are phenomenal holding this or even holding multiple glasses in their hands and the establishment said, no, we'll use a tray service. So I don't care what kind of experience you have, you may not be able to use a tray stand very well. So what are we gonna work on? We're gonna work on you, Mr. Experienced Bartender, using a tray stand because that's our standard and that's what we need to go through. And any examples like that in the kitchen, somebody coming in and they, oh, I've been cooking forever, that you're like, well, let's oh, go back and make sure that yeah. you can portion, that check out your knife skills. How often you have to I think that? in the back of the house, you see it even more because there's, it's, and like I said before, it's, it's the, who trained the trainer? Who trained them? Okay. Because it might not be the way we do it. Um, there's different ways to, I'm not going to say, different ways to cut a fish, but there might be a way that I cut a fish that I want you to do. It might get a better yield out of it. Um, okay. I was, I learned something the other day. I, I, my whole career, I went and never heard of broken rice, you know, and it's just, it's something that I have chef friends like, what do you mean you never heard of it? Like that's, it's amazing. Blah, 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 blah. Or never heard of it. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. And I heard it from, from a, a Netflix show. So, you know, by the way, it's just the end pieces, you know, they call it poor man's risotto, which I don't think is at all. I think it has much more aromatic. It's beautiful. Blah, 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 blah. Anyhow. It's just like, who trained you how to do this? You know, are, are you coming from a cooking school? Which one? Because they teach differently at different ones. Um, mm -hmm. Are you, are you self-taught? You know, who, how'd you learn? Do you learn from, you know, working in another kitchen? You know, who was that chef? What was his skill set? Or did you learn from the line cooks? Mm -hmm. So, because nothing is worse than trying to retrain bad habits. And in the kitchen, there's a lot of bad habits. And some of that are very, a safety, uh, you know, a, a big safety issue. So, yep. And front has too. I'm just saying, you know, on both sides of it. Sure. So I think you need to know where, and that's where that sit down and have that conversation with that person. And when you hear, you know, they tell you, I can do this. Well, mm -hmm. I need to see that <laughs> because absolutely, I'm not going to just trust you. It's not nothing against you. It's not an indictment on that person. It's just, mm -hmm. I do that with everybody across the board. Prove it. Prove it to me that you know this. Don't tell me. You can tell me all day in an interview. Now you're here. We've recruited you. We've brought you in. Prove that you can do it. Yeah. What's so hard about that? If you're so good at it, it should be easy. Let's see it. Let's yeah. have it. Or like, I, well, that's insulting. I'm like, why is that insulting? I need yeah. you to know. If you're in my number two or you're number, number three or you're my number four, you need to know how to drain that dishwasher because mm -hmm. sometimes you're closing up. You need to know yeah. how to fix it. You need to know how to do this. You need to... You're telling me you know this stuff. And if you're telling me you're a sous chef somewhere, I'm, I'm assuming you know it, but I still want to see it. If, if you're working in the front of house, I expect you to know how to bust the table. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And if you're too embarrassed to go bust the table for a management application, I, how are you going to manage people whose job that is? Like, I'm not asking you to bust tables for the rest of your life. I'm asking you to manage this, this department but you have to know the positions within it. Is, is it yes. fair to say that in order to be a good line, kick, you, uh, line cook, you have to have a basic understanding of the prep work to get to the line? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Um, does that mean you have to be the best person at it? No. Okay. No. In order to be a good chef, do you need a basic understanding of each position in the kitchen? Yeah, I, absolutely. I totally agree. Yeah, again, I don't care if you're the best line cook. I want you to be the best chef. So you have to understand what's going through it. So in order to be a general manager, would it be fair to say that you need a good understanding of each department in your facility? You, you definitely do. Cause not only would you need to know it, that's how you build rapport and respect mm -hmm. with your staff. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it doesn't mean that you have to be good at the thing. Cause I've seen plenty of great bartenders who did not turn into even good managers. Yeah. And they were so eager and excited to get back into bartending because that's what they were good at. So yeah. I don't think that you have to be a good bartender in order to be a good bar manager. It's a completely different skill set. I agree. And, and to the point of training is that if I have a bartender who's applying for a bar management position, their bartending experience is not the right experience for me to say that you're ready to be a manager. A hundred percent. I've got to train you. Yeah, I've got to train you to do it. 
it, that's the one thing with our with our industry. It's like, oh, we'll take the best server, make them the manager. Good luck with the that. Worst server doesn't make a bad manager, and the best ma- server does not make a great you know a great manager. It 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 depends on their personality and, and how they fit the description, the job description, their day to day role, right? Mm-hmm. Not uh, oh, well, they can serve tables. Well, they know the fact how to serve tables. That's the most important thing. But you don't have to be an all-star server, uh, uh, you know, server to be a great manager at all. Mm-hmm. And actually, I'd say you don't want your best server to be your manager, to be honest with you. No. Uh, from uh, the training world, one of my favorite trainers I've ever had was phenomenal. She was a bartender who, in class, when we were doing training, she talked and talked and talked and talked and talked and detailed about this and detailed about this and went through so much thorough expectations about what somebody was supposed to do but every manager on my team other bartenders like why on earth would you want to put her in a position like that she's a terrible bartender we can't stand bartending with her do you know why they didn't like bartending with her on a friday night she talked too much oh (laughs) (laughs) yeah but, but that was a skill that I wanted over on my training side. I'm like, no, 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 no. you come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Talk, 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 yeah. talk, 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 talk. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, even, even when you staff your bar, you kind of play that game. You're like, you know, you know, that person talks more. This one just run, you know, can run around in circles, knocking things out. Put them together. You know, you'll make more money. <laughs> um, so training wise, especially whether you're bringing somebody in, you want to verify what they're going through. And if you promote somebody, you want to verify the new skills that you expect them to do. Um, so a good training curriculum, what you've prescribed for each position, follows the same concept. It's progressive and it follows along a career path, always verifying that the previous knowledge is understood. And verifying, not a checklist, did you do this? Did you do this? It's like, no, I want to see this. I want to make sure yeah. that you can do this in order to do this. And they're building blocks to get you into this new position. Once you've proven to me that you know and can do these, not good at, can do, now we can get you good at the job that you need to be in that follows these other positions. And that's, that's what a training curriculum should look like, is verification of previous experience related to the new job, and then the tasks that are assigned to the new job. Yeah. I, I think that you know building into the training curriculum um, and being up front with the person that you're bringing into the management position, um, you know, have your, your expectations mm-hmm. and your benchmarks. Like we need to be at this mark in six months. What is yes. that mark and how are we going to track it? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you, you keep them in the loop of communication. It's not just, Hey, did you do this? No, we sit down. I want to write it down. I want to see it, see you in action. And then, so we can say, Hey, we did it in this timeline. We're meeting. We're on. We're on schedule to learn all the positions because I don't expect you to know right off the bat. That's the whole point of training. Right. right. You can't learn it in one day. Not at least not management. I don't think if you're coming from server, you need you need to have a plan, a staffing plan, a training plan. So so uh, let me ask you this: How much time does it take to learn a new position? I think it depends on the position. Um, you know, it depends on the position and it depends on the uh, the the employee. Some take longer than others. Um, I was one of those people, once it clicked, it clicked mm-hmm. and I, and I could take off running, but I needed a little bit of buffer to kind of get to that spot. Um, I think it's really just depends on the position, but if you're coming from server and you're going to manager, um, I say you could get a good grasp within two months. Um, you know, some people might take a month, some people might take six. I, I love that. We're, we're on the exact same page and this is uh, arguably my expertise and so you're 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 preaching to me right now and i love it because you don't know how long it's going to take but as a good operator a good business owner um as a good training manager or even learning direct uh learning and development director you need to have an a sense of how long it should take yeah now you need to empower the people that are there to be able to check these boxes did you do this did you do this so i have a day for you to do this Did you learn it in less than a day? Cool. Start on the next day's work. Did you need a little bit more time? Cool. Make sure that it happens. But at some point you need to be making sure that these, all these things are happening. Cause if you just have, well, training is one week. What are you doing during that week? 
you need to make sure that day one, part A, part B, you do this. Day two is a full day. Day three, we divide it up into three sections. And if that person's just listening during that time, they're, they're not proving to you that they can do it because it's, it's not a written test. They need to be able to show you that they can do it. And if they show you quickly that they can do it, move on to the next stage, move yeah. on to the part where they're doing what they need to. And if your two week training curriculum can be done in five days, cool. Why is it done? Because you verified it along the way. And if your two week training program needs an extra two or three days because somebody missed the part, I, I think that's great. At some point, it's taking too long. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. One, one, of, one of the craziest things in, in learning and development world that I see is people saying training is never over. And my head wants to explode. I'm like training's never, no, 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 no. There's a dollar sign fixed to this training. No, no, if there's a budget. Yeah. Like, learning. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> learning. Uh oh go, go learn learn every that's day what, that's training why they don't over. call it that's why they don't call it continuing uh was it continuing training not ct training <laughs> no yeah it's yeah, CE, yeah. continuing education like if you're learning that's yes. fine but yeah training to a point let's be honest though within the mm -hmm. first five days sometimes with the first day you kind of know if this training thing is going to work with that individual it yes yeah, it's, you, you do know, and some people learn faster than others, and you've got to have that patience, you've got to have the right people in place, yes. go over everything that they need to do for that task, give them the time that they need, but at some point, you know that they can't do it, and this, like we talked about in the recruiting, this isn't a matter of culture fit, oh, they're not figuring it out, no, be specific, what is it that you ask them to do that they are not able to do? Because what you ask them to do is part of the job that they're hired for. And if they cannot do that job, they're not the right fit for that job. Yep. That's, and there's nothing wrong that, with that. Nothing wrong with it. There's, there's and no there, And there's some people that you know that are right fit that take a little long, take a little more extra care yep. on certain aspects of the job. Not the whole job in general, but little aspects. Yep. Hey, listen, I was not the greatest with this. All right, let's say paperwork. I'm not the greatest with paperwork. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a little extra time. You might need twice the amount of paperwork training than you, but you don't need the customer facing stuff. You don't need, um, you need a little bit. You might right. need a little bit of training there or it goes very fast because we want to spend more time on this because you do well on this. You're a star right. there. You don't need my, my help there. Got it. You need I help saw there. it. It's done. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I've got all these different parts of your job. You've done these. Let's focus on these. And this two weeks of training may not be these 15 things that we have listed. It may be one day of do this, got it, do this, got it, do this, got it. Now we've got these other 13 days where we're going to watch you do these other things that you need to work on. And that's what your training manager needs to be doing is verifying those things. Now let's go back to that curriculum. And where I think a lot of people have big glaring errors in training is when they have multiple positions with the same responsibility. Because when you add the same responsibility, the same task to everyone, guess who's going to end up doing that? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody's going to take responsibility. Oh, I thought it was theirs. I thought it was theirs. So picture this, Paul, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it, is I've, I've spoken to a general manager being like, all right, who's responsible for your inventory? All right, well, uh, our, our bartender, our lead bartender does it and our bar manager and I do it. So they were including inventory with bartender training, with bar manager training, and the general manager had the responsibility. Guess, guess what their inventory looked like every week? Different. <laughs> Different. Hot garbage. All the yeah. time. Constantly. Hot lettuce. <laughs> Hot lettuce. <laughs> you... You've got to look at the uh, roles and responsibilities of what you're training each position and make sure that each position knows whose responsibility is it. Now, when we talked about always learning, but training is over, I don't care if your bar manager or your lead bartender learn how to do inventory. It's not part of their training. And we've yeah. got to be able to exclude that from what we call training so that we know when training is done and when this person knows how to do their job. Because if your inventory is not getting done and you've assigned it to three people, 
you hold no power in accountability for that task if you've assigned it all over the place. Yeah, measuring, accountability, mm -hmm. big, big keywords, big buzzwords. Yeah, buzzwords, accountability, training. So yeah. make sure that you have your, your career pathing. Make sure that you have your job descriptions. Make sure that you've outlined specific tasks that you expect that position, not that person, that position to do, and then verify that they can do it. Yeah, if and make this, them attainable. Make it attainable. Oh my goodness! Yeah, because you see some of these is like, what? Well, that, that's you know, making it attainable is like, does your bartender, a new bartender, really need to know how to do inventory? And he might know how to count it, but does he need to know how to do the whole thing? You know, I personally, I would never have them involved in it at all. I would not bring any hourly employee into that type of sequence within my establishment. I, I don't think it's appropriate. I don't think it's needed. Um, but if that is the way that you run your operations, good. I hope, I trust that it works well. I'd still argue all day long that your training, which is what we're talking about here, needs to be specific for one position, not one person, one position. And whoever's in that position, they have to know how to do that. Yeah, 100% agree. Cool. Um, well, that was easy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You got to twist um, my arm. So, uh, final question then on on training and uh, training. I, I think we can see I could go on and on. In fact, I do. I made a career out of it. Um, when is it okay to skip training? Never. Never. I mean, why? I mean, if I don't see a, a situation where you would want to skip it. I mean, if you had no choice, which I don't know what that choice would be, but I think okay, you don't that's skip it. I mean, you could test out of stuff. I'm cool with that. Okay. Then that, that's, that's where my, my question here is completely answered. And yet again, it's not, thank you, good job. It's almost like. I know, like, and we didn't, you didn't tell me this stuff, guys. I'm telling you. No. <laughs> I'm yeah. just that smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's the only time in an actual business sense that you want to skip training is when somebody's proven not verbally or written but proven that i can do this i can do this i can do this and now my two-month training that's prescribed you just showed me in one week that you're actually capable of doing all this let's go yeah get on that's the skipping, floor though. that's that's testing out I mean, that's as simple as yep so skip training no but can somebody yep. be ready? Absolutely. Absolutely. And why waste their time? Why waste your time? Let's move forward. And I, I think in my career, that's probably been the biggest um, headbutt that I've had with operators before is that it's impossible to prescribe specific training for individuals. And I've been in places and like, oh, Paul's great. He's able to do this. He's able to do this. He's able to do this. And he's still got three weeks left of training. I'm like, why? And they go, well, because you said that it's, you know, five weeks of training. I'm like, but these are all the requirements in five weeks. And he's actively yeah. done it. And you've got proof on all of this in two weeks. Like, yeah. let's go. Like, this is your timeline. Yeah. But if you, if, you make your, if you make your achievements before that timeline, so be it. It doesn't have to end on the same time. It's phenomenal. Or should it? Yeah. yeah. It just has to be done within this timeline. That if it's done in a week or a month, I don't care. But as, as long as they meet these, they, they're measured, we measure them and they meet their expectations, our expectations, let's go. Game on. And, and, and the, the pushback on that, anytime somebody's like, hey, they're ready in two weeks instead of five, I'm like, cool, what have they done? Oh, they're just ready. I'm like, what have they done? They're like, oh, I just know. I'm like, no. <laughs> I just know is not oh, that's certification. A good one. Like, uh -oh. oh, I just got a good feeling about it. Like, no. I got a good feeling about that. I said oh, that about my man. first wife. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, wow, there we go. Hey, we haven't yeah. wrapped up yet, but uh, I can do yeah. that right now. So <laughs> as somebody who's passionate about learning and development, I simply cannot understand why operators might omit training at any, at any point of the process. Trust is one thing, but never neglect the learning and understanding where your business is at stake. This is part two of four on hiring talent training. So in this 1033 consulting series, hiring talent, 
be sure to give us some insight as to what you see and hear and want to know more about. And we'll keep coming back with the, the extension of this series. Um, show us some love. Uh, let's get some, some comments, some likes, subscribe to the channel. We'll keep coming back with more strategies and insights to improve your operations. Thank you so much. Thank you.